tailgate down. All right, we're back with another uh, episode of Direct Motocross Tailgating brought to you by Scott Sports Canada, Mika Sports Canada. Uh, we're inside the Redemption Racing Rig. I've got the 108 nut up, Dylan Epstein. Dylan, tell us about your season so far. Season's been uh, a lot uh, better than what I had expected coming in. Um, I made uh, strides towards better, uh, I, I guess, uh, confidence for myself, uh, like personally, on a motorcycle. So uh, Kamloops, that first race, uh, just started a snowball effect of confidence for me, and I guess uh, I kind of broke through a little bit. So you're up in Canada. You've come here in the past a couple years ago. I think you did two two rounds, was yeah. it? Yep. What's your your look on this the whole season so far? The series, the tracks. Um, has it been a a plus, a bonus? I like the series. Some of the tracks I'm not a fan of. Um, I've actually liked most of them, but uh, there's just a few I wasn't really a fan of. It just kind of felt a little backyardish and too tight for 40 guys to go out there and race each other. Um, but other than that, the racing's been good between everybody. Uh, I've enjoyed the racing. I've enjoyed Canada. I've enjoyed uh, all of it. Everyone's just awesome out here from the riders to mechanics to er just everybody a part of the team or not a part of a team. So it's pretty cool. Are you where you figure you would be speed-wise? Did you think you'd be winning motos? And, um, and I, I knew I'd be top five, uh, no doubts, no questions. Um, I knew it was going to be hard to win. And when I when I won the first moto, it was almost like, wow, that was like easy, like not taking credit away from other people. It was more like, wow, that just happened type of thing. Like, I could have been doing this a long time ago. So it was kind of cool. But um, no, definitely like thinking about like Christoph Purcell coming up. Like, he's a guy that I've watched race. I've never raced him. I, I grew up watching the guy. And you beat him. Yeah, and I grew up watching uh, Michael Lessie. I grew up watching uh, Matt Gerke. Just the, the field stacked. And so I knew it was going to be tough, but when it happened, it was like, well, okay, like I can keep doing this. It's kind of cool. So we've got two rounds to go. Are you, you happy with where you're at, or you want no, you want more now? Um, well, with the way I'm at, at in the point standings, um, I definitely not... I don't want to be in sixth. I was in third for most of the time, and I had two weekends where we ended up having some bike issues, so um, that put me back into sixth. And then uh, this past weekend where Mike and I, Mike Alessi and I came together, so that was just kind of a... It, it's a bummer, it's racing, it is what it is, but um, I mean, what can you do about it? I mean, I'm in six, so I guess I've got to just keep riding it out. Okay, let's step back a little bit. How did you end up, your deal, coming up to Canada? Um, so I was going to do the U.S. Outdoors, and then, I, and that's all I was training for. I had no idea anything about can like coming here or doing Canada at all, so... Um, I was just, my mindset was U.S. Outdoors, U.S. Outdoors, and like, you know, uh, giving myself like realistic goals, like top 10 in U.S. Outdoors, which is realistic 450 for me. 450 in the yeah. U.S. as well? So, yeah, so, and that was realistic for me, and I almost achieved that goal with just the second round in the outdoors at Glen Helen, so uh, it was pretty cool. So, but stepping back, um, coming into the outdoor season in the U.S., um, I had heard that Ryan Surratt was coming up here, and he's a part of the NutUp team. Anyways, uh, I asked them what the deal was with that and like what the plan was and if plans had changed. And they're like, well, we could do you in the U.S. and Ryan in Canada, and it's just going to be hard for both of you guys at that point. So I was like, well, I'll do Canada. Why not? Like That would be kind of cool. So it made it easier for the team and, and both me and Ryan at the same time because Frenchie uh, at C4MX does our motors and we uh, the team runs Race Tech and I run Race Tech and it, it was just easier all around to, to if something were to happen to get something fixed or the problem solved. So. so at the end of the season do you start preparing for outdoor or sorry Supercross is that the um, right, Cup? right now I have a um, an offer from a US team that's it, it's actually a, a well known known team and uh, so that's that's pretty cool. Um, I can't complain at all. I just don't know what I'm going to do as far as what I'm what next year holds with NutUp or 
the team that I got an offer from. And so I don't know yet. I don't know. So all this new confidence, was it a good thing come to Canada and get some wins and, yeah. and get rolling again? Oh, and without a doubt. Because I was at a point where, okay, I'm a top 10 dude in the States. That's what I was thinking. And when I knew I was going to come here, I was like, immediately, if I'm a top 10 guy in the States, I'm a top five guy, no matter what, in Canada. And again, it goes back to like, I knew I could win, but it, I knew it was going to be hard. And I didn't know, I, I hadn't won a pro race since I've turned pro. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know what to expect, but it, it, coming here and winning and doing well, even, even getting top fives against dudes I grew up watching and admiring and, and beating those guys and racing with them and learning from them, the confidence just, it, it, you never, you're never really disappointed getting beat by like a two-time champion, Christoph Purcell or Michael Lessie who's beaten a guy that, uh, James Stewart and all the, all the dudes in the U.S. So it's like, uh, even Gurky and I, I, I can't really leave anybody out. You know, they've all done something huge and being beaten by those guys is, you know, nothing to be upset about, to be honest. Okay, so you've got your 1-1. One, one. If you come back next year, everything falls into place. You're a championship guy? I agree, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, I definitely believe that. Um, learning from this year, like uh, as far as um, mistakes or problems we've had or hurdles we've had to overcome, we've all of us, uh, and when I mean by us, it's me, my, my mechanic, the, our suspension guys, everybody, the whole nine yards, we've all learned from a, the mistake or the problems. So uh, I believe that we come together before the season and you know, buff out everything that needs to be buffed out, and we can we can be winning a championship without a doubt. Awesome. Well, you've been a great addition to the series. Um, you got a great team behind you. Let's yeah. give them some love. Yeah. So I'd like to thank uh, Nut Up Industries. Their their endless support for me has has been unreal. And without them, I wouldn't even be here. I wouldn't have been able to do any of this or a uh, race at all. And it just starts with them. Regardless, um, they're the one doing it all. So um, I can't give enough thanks for them. Um, Frenchie at C4MX, same thing, he, uh, he's been for, there for me even when I had nothing, so uh, the endless support and, and every time he does something for me, it's, it's never, nothing's ever left out, nothing's ever half done, it's just, it's either all in or all out, so uh, even him, uh, Race Tech, Shift, Fox, um, x -Brand Goggles, uh, Skivvy Underwear, um, John a blank. Moto cuts, graphics, uh, ODI grips, uh, Yoshimira, uh, boys in factory racing, recluse clutches, no toil. Um, and I think that's really it. And also my dad. My dad's always always been my number one supporter as well. So I can't leave him out. Perfect. Well, before we leave, uh, you've been in Canada this whole time. Yeah. What has stood out uh, site-wise for you? Um, well, uh, when I first, you know, got close to Canada, uh, anywhere other than California is green. So when I came up to Canada, I'm like, oh, wow, there's grass, you know. It's like I've never seen grass in my life. So uh, <laughs> there's green grass and tall trees, and they're all green. And in California, we're struggling to have that. But uh, the lakes, I didn't, like, I didn't know how many lakes there were across Canada. Uh, and just this, the scenery in general is so much greater than what I'm used to seeing in California. And it's like, you take what we have in California and just supersize it, like the mountains, the snow, the lakes. It's just like, it's really cool. And we, I actually drove through the Rockies yep. in Canada and I, I didn't even, I didn't know what the Rockies were. Until and I'm know. like, I got there and I'm like, holy crap, dude, this is sick. So I stopped and like did some sightseeing and I do all the touristy stuff, so. It's pretty cool. Safe to say you're a fan of yeah. Canada? Oh, I love it up here for sure. Well, uh, thanks for coming up. Thank you. Thank you to the people at Scott Sports Canada, Mika Sports, and the great people at Redemption Racing for giving us the tent. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. you put the tailgate down? Test one, test two. Test, 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 test.